Welcome back to the OPA on AWS video series. I'm Anthony Watson, a prototyping solutions architect and a contributing developer on the OPA project. In this video, we'll discuss applications that utilize a serverless architecture, and I'll walk you through how OPA can make using serverless even easier and faster. For context, I'll start by recapping what serverless architecture is, and then we'll look at some example use cases. We'll then see a demonstration of using OPA to create a serverless API, and then we'll finish with the discussion of how OPA benefits companies that are using serverless. Before we go any further, let's first level set and review what serverless is. Serverless is an architecture where AWS manages servers for you, so you don't have to. Serverless architectures scale automatically, so there's no need for you to worry about that either. Customers only get charged for resources that are actually used to process requests. This can save you money during periods of low usage of your application. Serverless deployments are typically simpler as well, since all you have to do is upload your code and configuration changes, and AWS takes care of the rest. Due to its simplicity and the additional responsibilities that AWS takes on for you, serverless applications can often have a faster time to market. So what are some examples of applications that are a good fit with serverless? One example is a website. As opposed to setting up a web server using technologies like Nginx or Apache Web Server, Serverless allows you to utilize an S3 bucket to serve your website files. You can even put a Content Delivery Network, or CDN, in front of your S3 bucket to provide caching and reduce latency by serving your files from the edge. Other common examples that utilize serverless architectures are event-driven and message processing systems, data processing and workflow orchestrations, and RESTful and GraphQL APIs. AWS also provides a serverless key value database called DynamoDB. For more information on serverless, visit the official AWS serverless website at this URL. Now it's time to see OPA in action with the serverless application. In this demo, I'll take on the persona of an application developer who is a coding wizard, but not a cloud expert. This developer wants to create a RESTful API and have it just work on the AWS cloud. From the OPA homepage, I will click that I want to create my app. OPA shows me several templates that I can use to create things. I'll now filter this list down to templates that will create a REST API. I can see from the description that this template is what I'm looking for, so I will select it. Before we continue, let's compare the developer experience we just saw with a developer portal to a developer experience without a developer portal. Many organizations start to create platform standards based only on reusable scripts, Let's see how this can often play out. Here we have a platform engineer who says, I've created a great new reusable script. Now my teammates can all use this to solve problem X, Y, Z. Now let's see what happens when developers go to use that script. We'll illustrate this with a conversation between developers. I think there's a script out there to scaffold a new app, but I'm not sure where it is. I think it's on the wiki. Where on the wiki? I don't know. I can never find what I'm looking for on that thing. Now we have a new developer join the conversation who says, I have the script. I used it six months ago. Here you go. Thanks. Now I just need to figure out what parameter values to pass into the script. An hour later. Okay, I think I've got it. Let's run this thing. And then he proceeds to run an outdated version of the script that no longer works. A developer portal can prevent the pitfalls we just witnessed by providing a single place for reusable assets so that they are always easy to find. Also, since the portal can sync with Git repositories where assets are stored, users will always make use of the latest asset versions. Finally, portals allow for a wizard-driven approach that can help guide users on the appropriate values to input into a reusable template. This is a perfect segue back to our demonstration where the developer will provide information for OPA to use to create the new REST API. We can see that OPA displays a form that asks the developer to enter information about the new API. It's important to note that the questions asked on this form are specific to an API application template that was previously created by a platform engineer. The platform engineer can customize the new application wizard to ask the developer to input any additional information that is needed to generate a new application. I'm feeling a bit hungry, so let's name our new API Snacks. And we'll describe it to say that it's going to return a list of yummy snack foods. Next, I need to pick an application owner. And the value I choose here affects which group can log into the developer portal and view and interact with this app. I'm going to pick the developers group. Next, I need to pick an initial environment that my application will be deployed to. 
In this example, let's say I'm a member of the API team, so I'll pick my team's developer environment. The last step is that I will need to enter a name of a Git repository that's going to be created for this application. I'll go ahead and say, yes, I want to create. And we now see that OPA has begun working on creating the new API and that the process is moving very quickly. Now that it has finished, we can open our Snacks API. Initially, OPA displays only summary details about our API. And this is because the process of staging our application in the AWS cloud has not completed yet. We can see that by looking at the application's CI-CD pipeline, which shows as running. I don't need to wait for the CI-CD pipeline to complete before I begin customizing the app's code. Instead, I'll grab the git command to clone the app's repository and execute it. I've cloned the Snacks API repository to my laptop, and now I will edit the code in my IDE of choice. With serverless applications, custom code logic is defined inside a Lambda function. The learning curve for using Lambda functions is extremely small because it's no different from writing a plain old function in any programming language Lambda supports. For example, Lambda supports languages such as Python, Java, JavaScript, Golang, and C Sharp. Our Snacks API is written in JavaScript. I will now edit it to return some yummy snacks. Here we can see the definition of our Lambda function. As we can see, the function takes an event as an input parameter, and it's going to return a HTTP response code, some HTTP response headers, and a body that's just an array of JSON data. So in this case, we want to return snacks. So I'll update the data with some snack ideas. OK, so now that we've updated the data to be snack data, now we need to update the path that the API is listening on. We'll go into our definition of our API, and we'll change this path to snacks. I'm now ready to test the changes. Using a free CLI tool called SAM CLI, I can execute the Snacks API on my laptop before I even push my changes to AWS. SAM CLI uses Docker containers to emulate running lambdas in the cloud. Let's make sure the API is working properly. I can see that SAM is running my API on localhost. Now I'll try to hit that API. Great. You can see my gummy worms and my chips and salsa. The changes that I made are working properly. Now I'll go ahead and commit my changes to Git and utilize OPA to deploy those changes to the AWS cloud. When I merged my changes to Git, my application CI-CD pipeline built my application so that it is ready for deployment to AWS. I'll now start the deployment to the dev environment. OPA will continuously pull to let us know the progress that it is making on the deployment. I'll pause here until it completes. All right, the deployment was successful, and we can see that OPA is showing us that our application is live. Let's click the link to hit the API on the AWS dev environment to make sure it is returning our snacks. Awesome, we're seeing our snack data. As a developer, I'll frequently want to see my application's logs, so let's see how I can do that. I'll go ahead and click on the Logs tab. My logs come up in order, so I'll look at the latest log, and I have access to those logs. I may also want to see an audit trail of what activities have been taken against my application. If we click on the Audit tab, we can see a trail of activities. Here we see that the application's stack was created on this date by this person. Now let's see what actions I can take to manage my app. I'll click on the Management tab, and we can see that I have the ability to add a QA environment or any other environments that have been set up. I can add those to my CI CD pipeline to deploy to those environments without me having to make any code changes at all. Next, we can see that I have an option to bind resources. If I had things like a database set up here that I wanted my application to be able to access, I can go through this wizard to add access to that database from my app. And then finally, I can delete my app from just the dev environment or from all environments that it is deployed to. In closing, Let's recap the benefits OPA provides for developers. The latest version of your organization's reusable assets and templates are available in one place. No more searching. Next, application CI-CD pipelines that can deploy to one or more AWS environments are provided out of the box without the developer needing to write any code. These pipelines are stored in the application's repository, though, in case the developer wants to customize them. Developers have a single pane of glass with easy access to all the things they'll frequently need. This enables developers to take actions like viewing application logs, deploying the latest version of their app to an environment, 
cloning the application's Git repository, viewing application audit trails, seeing what cloud resources make up their app, and getting a link to the running app for a specific environment. Developers can also use the portal to answer questions like, which environments are, is my application running in? And when was my application last updated in a given environment? Overall, OPA enables developers so that they can focus on the code, not the cloud. Thank you for watching this video on OPA for serverless application developers. Stay tuned for the next video in our series.